Hey there, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite almost arch user, by the way, Gardner. Today I wanted to talk about Manjaro. Uh, Manjaro is my favorite Linux distribution. So I wanted to talk about why that is. Manjaro is nifty, let's talk about it. So without further ado, here are the seven most awesome reasons to use Manjaro. Number seven, a variety of flavors. Now Manjaro comes with KDE, XFCE, or GNOME. Manjaro provides end users with not only options, but officially supported options. This is super handy for any newcomer who, you know, is learning a new distro and doesn't really want to learn a new uh, desktop environment's workflow. If you're a KDE fan, you can just download the Manjaro KDE ISO and be off to the races. Or if you're like me and you're a GNOME fan, uh, you can just download it. Uh, you download the ISO. And the best part is you don't have to wait for a new version of the operating system to get the latest version of your favorite desktop environment. Number six, awesome hardware support. Now you might be thinking, well, you know, hardware support on Linux is really good. So why would Manjaro be any different? Well, that's where MHWD and its companion GUI come in. MHWD scans your system for available drivers and then can automatically install your preferred version, either proprietary or open source. MHWD has resolved uh, several hardware issues that I've run into on some of the more exotic hardware that I've installed it on, and that's super nice to me. MHWD makes installing drivers a cinch on Manjaro, and that's why it's number six on my list. Number five, rolling release. As an Ubuntu refugee, I was familiar with the concept of PPAs, personal, personal package archives. If I wanted current software on my Ubuntu install, I had three viable options. I could either wait for the next version of the OS and hope that they updated the package. I could install the latest deb or snap package from the project itself, or I could install a PPA from a third party. Uh, see, PPAs are basically apt repositories uh, that are managed by people other than the distro maintainer. Anytime you would do apt update, it would scan the uh, PPAs as well as the official repos, and you would be able to install updates from um, whatever repo had an update available. And I always found that the more PPAs I had installed on my machine, the less stable Ubuntu became. But when I moved over to Manjaro, I didn't have to worry about PPAs anymore because pretty much every package in Manjaro's repo is the latest stable release. And if it's not, just give it like a minute and it will be. <laughs> Now this is because Manjaro is what's called a rolling release. It doesn't have distinct versions of the operating system really. It's more like uh, as packages in the repository get updated by whoever's writing the software, Manjaro just pulls those in, tests them, and then pushes them to the repo. Now this is in contrast with Ubuntu's uh, more traditional uh, distinct release schedule, where new versions of the operating system are numbered and released every six months. And the major updates of apps are often held back, but not always, but often held back uh, for release with the next version of the OS. And that's one of the reasons that I love Manjaro. It's because I much prefer uh, using the rolling release style of updates where, uh, where software is always at its latest version. Number four, kernels, kernels, kernels. Now, there were times as an Ubuntu user where trying to uh, resolve an issue would require me to actually install a, a newer version of the uh, Linux kernel, one that was newer than the one that shipped with my OS. It was always like confusing and strange and a little bit scary to do that on Ubuntu, uh, especially if the kernel version was actually newer than the one that came with the release I was using. Now I haven't used Ubuntu in a couple years, but I've heard that recently it's become a bit easier to actually install new versions of the uh, of the kernel in Ubuntu. But one of the reasons I'm not an Ubuntu user is because on Manjaro, using different kernels is just so much easier. Just open the kernel manager, which is a built-in Manjaro utility, and you can install uh, or set a default or remove any kernel versions that you want or need or don't need. And then you're booting with a new kernel. That's pretty awesome, and Manjaro makes everything super easy on the, uh, that front. Now, one might ask, why would you actually need to update the kernel version? That's a great question. Uh, one of the reasons that I have done it in the past is because uh, I have a Radeon Vega 64 card. This is an AMD graphics card, and um, AMD actually provides open source drivers for that card, and uh, on Linux, open source drivers are included in the kernel. So if I wanted to upgrade uh, the, the version of the graphics card drivers I'm using, then it means upgrading the actual Linux kernel. 
And that's one of the major reasons that I've upgraded the kernel on Manjaro uh, a few times. It's because I wanted newer graphics card drivers. But because of a lot of the other like entries on this list, I really haven't needed to, uh, to change what kernel version I actually run for the most part. Number three, Arch Linux without all the fuss. Now there's a reason that by the way I use Arch is a meme because there is a certain prestige with using it. Arch Linux requires you to know exactly how you want your machine configured and then you configure it all yourself. So when someone says, by the way, I use Arch, you really should bow down and worship them because they truly are superior Linux beings, especially when you consider that Arch really has some of the best quality of life features out of any distro. Now, while I'm definitely joking about bowing down and worshiping an Arch Linux user, uh, there are definitely are cred points uh, for using Arch and uh, benefits to using it as well. It's not exactly easy to set up, really, and uh, getting everything configured for new users is, eh, yeah, it's not ideal. And when you just want to get to work and not deal with the nitty gritty of kernel modules and config files and blah, 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 Manjaro solves all that. Manjaro is based on Arch, and it provides you with most of the benefits of being an Arch Linux user without all the pain points. In fact, I'm so confident in Manjaro's ease of use that I would actually recommend it for new users who have almost no experience with Linux in the first place. Number two, the Arch Wiki. Uh, the Arch Wiki is one of the most comprehensive uh, documentation resources I have ever seen uh, or ever used uh, in my tenure with Linux. And thankfully, since Manjaro is built atop the Arch Wiki, pretty much everything on the Arch Wiki is also relevant to Manjaro. Want to replace Pulse Audio with Pipewire? Well, there's a wiki page that'll help you do that. Need to enable user mode Linux? There's a wiki page for that. Have a Dell Latitude E5520 that you wanna make sure is running tip top shape? <laughs> there's a wiki page for that too. It's so useful and it's relevant to Manjaro and I just think it's a wonderful resource and that's why it's number two on this list. And finally, Manjaro's uh, software manager GUI uh, or add remove software. This is, this is like the best GUI interface for a package manager that I've used in a long time. Um, the Manjaro software package manager is really slick. Not only can you enable snap and flat pack support built right into the operating system uh, from just a simple switch in the GUI, uh, but you can also enable the Arch user repository. Uh, the AUR, as we call it, is really, really cool. Basically, if you can't find the package that you're looking for in Manjaro's like re official repository, you will find it in the AUR. Now, the Arch user repository is a collection of scripts uh, that help you build and install uh, projects. It also helps you keep them up to date if you tell the AUR to do so. So many of the applications that you might need are found in the AUR. Uh, it's fantastic. I've, I installed Discord through there. You can also get it as a flat pack. Uh, you can get OpenRCT2, uh, Olive Video Editor, uh, and uh, Zoom. I have installed a bunch of applications through the AUR uh, because they weren't available in Manjaro's like standard repository. And yes, there are a lot of proprietary apps in the AUR, but if you want say like the bleeding edge version of a package and you don't want to compile it from source on your own, the AUR is where you'll turn. And in my opinion, Manjaro's software management is just far and beyond the best feature of Manjaro. And it's one of the best reasons to use Manjaro Linux. But what do you think? I would love to hear from you guys. What reasons do you like Manjaro or not? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. I wanna thank all the amazing people who have become patrons of this channel, uh, who have also supported the show on uh, YouTube uh, as YouTube members. You guys make this show a reality. If it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you. If you like these videos and you believe in the work that I do, you can actually support the show on a YouTube membership or on Patreon. Uh, there's links in the description to do just that. Um, but that's going to do it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a blessed day.